Howdy! In this video, we're going to discuss the kinematical approximation. I decide to discuss kinematical approximation here for three reasons. First, in the diffraction section of this course, we mainly focused on the dynamical approximation, where the intensity of the diffracted beam and the intensity of the direct beam are dynamically coupled. The dynamical effect arises because the diffracted beam is scattered by the same set of atomic planes multiple times. If the sample is very thin, then we can calculate the intensity of the diffracted beam using the kinematical approximation. Second, when we introduce the precession electron diffraction PED, we mentioned the beam precession is able to remove the dynamical effect, highlighting the kinematical diffraction information. In this video, you will learn the meaning of kinematical diffraction. Third, in the next video, we'll talk about the weak beam dark field imaging. When doing the weak beam dark field imaging, the diffraction spot we use to form the image has a large value of excitation error. The coupling between the diffracted beam and the direct beam becomes weaker, so the contrast we see is mainly kinematical. That's why I think now is a good time to introduce the concept of kinematical approximation to you. Let's revisit what we learned in the dynamical contrast. Start by looking at the solution of the Helwig willing equation. Phi g square tells us the intensity of the diffracted beam. The effective excitation error can be written as a function of s, the excitation error, and can see the extinction distance. In the two-beam condition, the excitation error is equal to zero, the effective excitation error is equal to 1 over Cg. We can simplify the expression as this form. In this case, the intensity of the diffracted beam is strongly coupled with the intensity of the direct beam, so we call this scenario the dynamical approximation. In the weak beam dark field condition, we set the excitation error to be large. We'll see why it is large in the next video. Then the effective excitation error can be approximated as the excitation error. In this scenario, the intensity of the diffracted beam is not coupled with the intensity of the direct beam, so we call this kinematical approximation. Let's start by assuming we have a perfect lattice and we have a specific reciprocal lattice vector of g and the unit cell at position of r. Then phi, that's the phase difference due to scattering, can be written as 2 pi g dot r. Then the amplitude that is scattered by this unit cell can be written as a e to the power of i phi and do a simple substitution that's e uh, that's a e to the power minus 2 pi i g dot r. In this equation here, if g dot r is equal to n, where n is an integer, then a multiplied by e to the power of i phi is equal to a itself, and this is the Bragg's condition. We can assume each unit cell in the column scatters the same amplitude. So we can write a n, the total amplitude to be scattered, is equal to sigma n f n. This is the structure factor. Multiply by e to the power of minus 2 pi i g dot r. We can also rewrite it as an integral. So at, in this case t is the thickness, 
is equal to f over a integrating from minus half t to half t then exponential minus 2 pi i g dot r dr a here is the size of the unit cell or lattice parameter so far we only focused on the perfect condition what if we introduce some imperfections for example what if we tilt the incident beam slightly away from the Bragg condition by s the previous equation can be written in this format the only difference is g now is g plus s by expanding this equation we'll have this and let's rearrange it we'll have this in this case we set g at the Bragg condition and deviation from the Bragg condition is denoted as s so we know this entire term here is equal to 1 and we can just rewrite the amplitude as this the solution by integrating this exponential equation is this so the amplitude of the diffracted beam is a sine function of t and s t is the sample thickness s is the deviation away from the perfect Bragg condition which is referred as the excitation error so what if we increase s if we increase s the total amplitude will decrease so by tilting away from Bragg's condition the amplitude of the diffracted beam decreases what if we increase t the sample thickness by increasing t the amplitude of the diffracted beam will oscillate following the sine function so the kinematical approximation can also explain the thickness fringes we see in TEM specimens let's take a step forward by introducing a defect in the crystal with a displacement vector r the amplitude of the diffracted beam can be written as this and note that r now becomes r plus r the lowercase r plus capital R now we have two factors contributing to the phase shift one is from s the deviation away from the Bragg condition the second is the capital R that's the displacement field imposed by the defect look at the phase difference phi can be written as 2 pi g plus s r plus r then expand it we will have four terms here g multiply by the small r the lowercase r because it's at Bragg's condition so this will drop off and also the s excitation error multiply by the big r because this value will be very small so we'll drop that off as well in the end we'll have 2 pi s r plus g r Put it back into the amplitude equation we have exponential here the minus 2 pi i multiply by s dot r plus g dot capital r you may wonder why this equation is important it is because when we do the weak beam dark field imaging we like to highlight defects such as dislocations by maximizing the integral on the right hand side of this equation we'll be able to maximize the intensity of the defect we try to image using the weak beam dark field technique to wrap up there are two scenarios we can apply the kinematical approximation the first case is when the sample is extremely thin and the electrons are only scattered once by the lattice planes the second case is when we set the excitation error large enough just like in the case of the weak beam dark field imaging in the next video we'll have a closer look at the weak beam technique and learn how to use this technique to illuminate dislocations in crystalline materials